And now to our first panelist, Ambassador Martin Grandits. Many thanks to the organizers of this event for letting me into it and uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, make some comments on uh, girls' education in, in Afghanistan. I hasten to say that I'm neither an expert in, uh, in Afghanistan nor an expert in education policy or the organization of education. But I am, as uh, many Swedes, I would say, uh, a keen adherent to our uh, strong commitment to Afghanistan and the development and security of Afghanistan. Uh, and also among very many Swedes who uh, regularly, f and also Swedish media, uh, who regularly follow particularly this aspect of uh, development in Afghanistan. Uh, I will come to one of the reasons why this is so uh, later on in my remarks, but I can safely say that uh, few things tend to attract the attention and interest of the Swedish public in regard to Afghanistan as much uh, as does uh, education and education uh, for girls. Um, there is a lot to gain if we invest in girls' education. Girls who have been educated are less likely to be forced into early marriages. They are more likely to have fewer and healthier babies and send their children to school themselves. Education helps women and girls to know their rights, that has been pointed out by uh, Ambassador Tani, uh, and to gain confidence to claim them. Investing in girls' education is also one of the most effective ways of reducing poverty. There are, however, various barriers to girls' education. In Afghanistan, access to education is challenged by security. It is challenged by geographic distances and lack of good infrastructure. A high number of children, especially girls, drop out of school as a result of long distances to school, lack of security, lack of female teachers, early marriages, and a traditional view of girls' education. Despite these barriers, some impressive results have been achieved in Afghanistan over the last 10 years, and they were cited by my colleague, Ambassador Tani. Um, school enrollment has increased from approximately 1 uh, million to uh, 7.5 million in 2012, and later in 2014, uh, according to my colleague, uh, as much as 10 million. And these are indeed monumental uh, achievements in and of themselves. Sweden has supported education in Afghanistan since the beginning of the 1980s. Since 2002, we have contributed 1.2 billion Swedish crowns to the education sector. That translates into uh, 200 uh, million US dollars. Our support is channeled through the Swedish Committee uh, for Afghanistan and through UNICEF. And a few words about the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan, because it's a rather remarkable NGO. It has been present in Afghanistan for over 30 years. During the Taliban regime, uh, the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan ran, ran the only schools open for girls in the country. Education and health services were predominantly provided by uh, the uh, Swedish Committee for Afghanistan, and until the establishment of the new Afghan government in 2002, the SEA was indeed the largest employer in the country. The SEA is working currently in 14 provinces, and in 2011, almost 126,000 children attended schools run by the SEA, the majority of students being girls, 54% to be more exact. Sweden is also the largest donor to UNICEF's education program in the country. The education sector, um, will remain a priority for Sweden's engagement in Afghanistan, and as we've heard, it's also a key priority of the Afghan government itself. The focus of our work is increased access to primary education of good quality, with special focus on girls' rights to education, more trained teachers, and increased literacy among women aged 15 to 24. 
For the past 10 years, uh, there has been an emergency approach to education rather than a quality approach. This is not entirely unnatural. Uh, but today, according to our, assess our assessment, the quality of education is the main problem in the education sector. Lack of qualified teachers, especially women, and lack of educational materials and classrooms, this all affects the quality of the education provided. We need to uh, continue this work of ensuring that all girls and boys in Afghanistan, including those living in rural areas, uh, and including children with disabilities, we should not forgive, uh, forget uh, children with disabilities, that they all have access to education. And we need to ensure that children not only enroll in school, but also complete it. We also need to focus on, as I said, quality of education na nationwide. Closing the gender gap in education by 2015 is one of the benchmarks for the Millennium Development Goals. We know that the education level of women emerges as a reliable predictor of almost all indicators for women and children. As women's education level rise, performance is higher on most other indicators. Achieving gender equality and empowerment of women and girls must be part of the post-2015 <coughs> development framework. And uh, I think there is a huge irrepressible constituency for making uh, gender empowerment a freestanding goal uh, in the post-2015 framework and also a huge uh, constituency for mainstreaming gender equality in all other uh, goals. <coughs> Guaranteeing literacy for all women and girls and eliminating gender-based differences in access to education at all uh, levels will be uh, an essential part of the post-2015 framework. Educating girls in Afghanistan and in the rest of the world is not only the right thing to do, it's all, it also has a positive effect on economic growth and leads to increased prosperity for individuals, communities and societies. Uh, and must probably also, uh, and most probably also to more peaceful societies. I think I am there. Thank you. Okay, thank you.